Hello and welcome back. Let me make sure sound is working. I believe it's working where we left off. To this day, you can go to Boston and stand on the spot where these colonial patriots lost their lives. A few of you messaged me where, what you think that event, what you thought that event in American history was. To find out. It was our buddy, Sam Adams, who coined the term the Boston Massacre. That's what it was. So you can go to the exact spot in Boston. Hopefully we can go there on our field trip in June and stand on the exact spot in Boston where this Boston massacre occurred. Now the word massacre, you might think of, like when I think of massacre, I, I think of hundreds and hundreds of people that were killed. How many people died in the Boston massacre? It was our buddy, Sam Adams, who coined the term Boston Massacre to describe the violence on March 7th, 1770. Adams was in the Boston State House the very next day, demanding the immediate removal of British soldiers from Boston. When the governor, the one whose house had just been burned down, gave some lame excuse about how he, quote, didn't have the authority to order British troops around, Sam Adams unleashed one of the all-time greatest threats ever. It, quote, it is at your peril if you refuse. The meeting is composed of 3,000 people. They have become impatient. A thousand men are already arrived from the neighborhood and the whole country is in motion. Night is approaching. An immediate answer is expected. The governor backed down then and there. The crowd went wild. The British troops that evacuated became known as Sam Adams Regiment throughout Boston. And Sammy became known as the Iron Man of the People or his guts in standing up to the governor. For the next couple of years, the British government kind of chilled out and let things settle down. It moved the soldiers to a fort outside town so they couldn't massacre colonists or anything. They repealed the Stamp Act. So calling it the Boston Massacre is an example of propaganda. But then in 1773, things got bad again. The British passed another tax, the T. Act. Once again, this was a tax that had been forced on America without any input from the colonies. It's usually a pretty complicated piece of government mumbo jumbo, but here's the short version. The Tea Act placed a big tax on tea, and then it said nobody was allowed to buy tea from anyone except the British East India Company. This meant that a lot of American companies were going to go out of business and that the colonists were going to have to pay a lot of money to a company that was basically run by the guys who were running the British Parliament. I'll give you one guess as to how well this went over with the colonists. In Charleston, South Carolina, they stacked the East India Company's boxes of tea on the dock and left them there until they rotted. In New York City and Philadelphia, angry citizens forced the company's ships to turn around and sail right back to England. In Boston, Sam Adams and a few of his buddies organized something a little more dramatic. On the night of December 16th, 1773, an anguish mob of colonists dressed up as American Indians swarmed aboard the British East India Company in Boston Harbor, screaming and yelling and scaring the English crews half to death. The mob of torch-wielding maniacs ransacked the ships, grabbed every crate of tea they could find, and threw every last one into the harbor. That's where we will stop. Now, what famous event in American history am I talking about? Or is that paragraph talking about? Send me an email with your thoughts. See you soon.